Hi and welcome to a very short tutorial on Keltex, an absolutely brilliant little script writing tool. Uh, makes writing scripts much, much easier and formats them for you. So let's select Keltex here and get going. When you've selected it, this is the first screen that comes up and uh, you have a sample screenplay there from the wonderful Wizard of Oz. Uh, which is really neat, so you can see how one is laid out. And the cloud button here is an interesting one because if we press that, it will allow us to create an account. When we create this free account, the main thing that that does is it allows us to sync any scripts that we have from computers to the iPad app, um, signing in, same thing, just means that you have access to whichever um, scripts you've written from any computer. So it's well worth signing up for a free account. So we've just pressed the little plus button up here uh, in the top left hand corner and that gives me five different types of screenplays. Uh, I could have a screenplay, a stage play, uh, a TV, a comic or an audio play. And whatever happens, whatever you touch here, the resulting document that comes up will be formatted in exactly the way that it should for that particular type of document. So I'm going to start with a screenplay for a film. So my first document comes up there in the top left hand side and you can see it's been created today but it has no name yet. If I click on the screenplay name for long enough it will bring up this dialog box and if I click in here it will allow me to type in whatever I want as a title and click done and move on. So when we've done the title the first thing that comes up is this screen here and you will see uh, along this uh, central line here there are a bunch of different symbols each of which have a different function they're also laid out sequentially in the order that you would usually use them in a screenplay so you can see the first thing up here is the slug line int or ext int or ext stands for exterior or interior the next thing you would usually have to put is whether it's day or night so let's do one here you can see I've put int exterior day and I've also in one or two words put what the location is and that's the function of that button to tell you where this scene is taking place. The next little symbol we have down here, the exclamation mark, is for the action. And what happens here is that whatever I type in is uh, justified to the left and that is anything that is going on at the time, usually with the actor, actors or actresses. Next button, it's the little person and you can see that that has automatically aligned itself into the middle. So that's a character button and that's going to tell me who is speaking next. So I'm going to write in the name Sheila. You notice that it has capitalized this automatically because character names are always capitalized and centered in uh, any form of screenplay. Next, if we look at this, it's uh, just a little speech bubble, which evidently means that we're about to write a line of dialogue. So if I write my line of dialogue, you'll notice that this is uh, centered down the middle of the page. It doesn't go beyond a, a, a certain area here. And that again is a normal formatting procedure. So when we come to this uh, fifth button along here, these are brackets, but they're called parentheses. And in parentheses, in a screenplay, what we're doing is a writing actions uh, that one of the characters might do. So in this case, I've just written she twirls her hair nervously and that gives the director and the actor or actress um, an idea of what she should be doing while she delivers that line. Next, if I press the camera button, you'll see that several options come up. We've got wide shot, medium shot, a cut in or a master. 
Now you should know what each of these types of shot is, uh, but if I click one of them, in this case I've clicked medium, I can then fill in any further details. So I've just written close up of Sheila's face from the side. That gives the director a good idea of what he's shooting. Now this isn't strictly necessary in a screenplay because the screenplay is for the actors and the director more than anything, but it's not a shooting document. But it's really, really useful to put in. Next button here. This is an edit or a transition button. If I click this, you'll notice that automatically it's aligned itself on the right-hand side of the page because this is where we usually put edits in. So, if I uh, look at the types of edits that I might use, I might just put a cut or a fade or something like that. And cut to indicates that the next scene will be um, something different, but it'll be a cut as a transition. Now, I've gone back here to the character, because this is usually what we do next in the middle of a conversation. You'll notice that a name has already come up. It's the only name I've ever typed, so it's saying, are you want to use this again? In this case, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to type a new name in. So here we go. I've written the name Dawn in there. And I've written my line of text uh, from, by using the dialog button. Now, if I go back to my character button here, you'll see that this time around, I've got two possible characters to choose from, Dawn or Sheila. So it saves you a little bit of time, which is really, really nice. So I've picked Sheila out of the two. I have written a line of dialogue there. Can't remember. This isn't the most, you know, scintillating conversation in the whole world, I have to admit, but it's late and just let me get on with it. I've also put a parenthesis in there because she's caught herself and she's not going to fiddle anymore because that's embarrassing, frankly. And then I have cut to a new scene. So again, we go back to that interior, exterior um, slug line and we carry on from there. And that's just the process throughout the whole thing. The formatting is done for you, which is really neat. So you'll see now that this is what my screenplay looks like so far. And now I want to explore some of these buttons in the top right hand side. So the first one on here is this little bubbles button and that's for comments. So if you are collaborating with anybody, you can add your comments in there. For instance, uh, where I've had a, a close up further up, I've suggested maybe use an extreme close-up here, and that way you can build a dialogue between the different people who are collaborating, even if they're not in the same room. On to the next button. This is a settings button for if you are printing it or for the screen lookout. So you can show the first page number, that's a good idea. You can format it as A4 or US letter, and you can have a parchment background to make it look like an old-fashioned script. Third button along is your sharing button. Again, you have some fairly traditional, um, for the iPad at any rate, options. You can email it as text, you can email it as PDF, and you can print it. And finally, the little bookmark button means that if I want to put a bookmark in, this scene will be scene number one. Now, the reason that's useful is if I've done 10 or 11 scenes, I can come to this area here and just click on scene 10, and it will automatically jump to it without the need for me to scroll through it. And that is more or less all there is to Keltex. It's a really simple program for doing a fairly simple but laborious task, and it just gets rid of all the formatting worries that you might have. Anyway, hope you make good use of it.